Hey, Joe here, out in the garage on a Saturday morning again. Tony's over. Uh, we're going to do some work on his car and some work on my car. On his car, uh, we're going to install a fuel pressure sending unit so that he can log fuel pressure. On my car, we're going to install a transmission pressure sending unit so that we can monitor transmission pressure and hopefully start it up. So, you ready, Tony? I'm ready. Let's get started. Yeah. So I got this adapter that's just AN to AN, gives me a little port I can screw that uh, pressure sender into, and that's just going to go into my already AN fuel lines, uh, probably right there. For my car, I have the same adapter here, 6AN, and there's uh, somewhere on the side of it, there's a place uh, to put a gauge uh, or sensor. And I have a 300 PSI sensor here, and I'm going to put it down here on the transmission. There's a bunch of places I could log, but let's get in here like this. These are the locations I'm thinking about. So this one is converter out, so that would be converter pressure. This one feeds from that RD port to the planetaries, so this would be the RD port measurement. But really, I just want to know either way that I have transmission pressure. Um, I'll probably add both of these at some point, as well as another sensor down in the bottom of the transmission that I would use to monitor uh, clutch applied pressure. So anyway, let's get started. <laughs> there, was, uh, there was some residual fuel pressure, was. Oh, uh, was, yeah, let's see. Yeah, there's still a little. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Yeah. Danger. Be careful. How's that thing look? Uh, pretty gross. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, you better spray that thing out, clean it up. Yeah. It's looking better, better already. already. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, you see that fancy? Perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's plenty. Yeah, lots of goop. Don't get it in the end of the sensor. I didn't. <laughs> see? So you can see I installed the adapter there, and uh, the sensor is installed as well on the adapter. All right, so you'll just have to get that wired up, right? We can show what pins to use on the ECU when you do that. Wait, this isn't a wireless uh, sensor? Uh, if you bought the Bluetooth one, you did, but I didn't know you had that kind of money. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right, I don't. Okay. Whoa. I'm going to use some of this thread sealant right here to install that sensor into that gauge port adapter. Way back in here, let me bring you all way in here. Let's sneak down here. There's a sensor that I've been using to monitor brake pressure. I did that because of this setup that I used with no booster. I just wanted to see if I could get acceptable amounts of pressure that should be working to keep my car on the line when I'm getting on the converter. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move 
the wiring for that sensor over to the new transmission sensor. So I'm going to need to reroute that wire and see if I can get it over there. Looks like Tony's ready to do some wiring here for his fuel pressure sender. It's always fun to try to get it through the firewall. All right, the so Joe Wrench's garage wiring station, here we go. Nice. What's next? Now I gotta install this and I gotta connect it to the ECU. All right. On this side. You can do it. Did you get it through the firewall? Yeah, I got it going. Um, so I ended up turning the sensor before it was facing that way, but I decided to go through the firewall over there. Yeah. So the sensor faces that way now, and then we go through the firewall over there underneath the, uh, you know, the brake stuff over there. Yeah, yeah, all right. Cool. All right, so you just gotta figure out what three pins it is on the ECU to connect, and uh, we can go from there. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Joe? I'm just checking on you. I, you think every, I think everything's going all right. You doing a good job? Yeah, I got my, uh, my new sensor wires here, and we're getting them spliced into some power, and uh, we're gonna have to do a signal wire also, and then we'll be ready to to program it into that input on the ECU. Nice. All right, I got that stuff all tightened up. I didn't video because it's kind of a two-handed job, but now it's ready to route that wire and bring it over and plug it into that connector right there. I had to get under here to route this wire, this connector over to that transmission sensor um, so while I'm under here, I'm going to dig up this wiring that's just tie wrapped in right here. Um, that's for my transmission temperature and engine oil temperature. So I'm going to get those disconnected or this tie wrap uh, cut and run these things down and route them over to their sensors while I'm under here. I have the wire for transmission temp routed down here. Sitting right there, ready to be plugged in. And then the other direction is oil temperature, sitting right there, ready to be plugged in. They're not plugged in yet because uh, the way they're wired right now, they make my ECU mad, and I need to wire a pull-up resistor in there. So that'll be happening in an upcoming video. So from over by the brake master and down under by the K member and all the way back over here, it looks like this uh, sensor wire has plenty of length on it. I can get it all the way up here, so it'll be no problem plugging into that sensor down there. And that's ready to go. So what did you do in ECM link to make that, uh, to start getting that to work? Well, since we wired our signal wire from this fuel pressure sensor up to the EGR input on the ECU, I've gone into ECM link to ECU inputs down here then to the EGR temp input pin, and I've selected in this drop-down menu linear fuel pressure because that's the type of sensor we have on there. All right, cool. I'm gonna right-click on the log while not logging and go to captured values. All right. Lin fuel press, add to device, and okay, right? Yeah. Now add it to your displayed values, and I think you'll be good. Ooh, it's right there. Yeah, it's probably, if you right-click on that, there's a configuration for that, too, right? Lin Fuel Press Preferences. Yeah. Ooh, what is like this, it? too? I want to see what that is. I guess nothing. All right, yeah, zero to 100. Right, so your settings are on the right over there. Minimum volts for this sensor, I know off the top of my head, is 0.5 volts. And 
and then the minimum fuel pressure is zero. Max 4.5 and 100. Now, if you start logging, just want to make sure that that stayed. So now if I start the log, yeah, look at that, negative 0.74. <laughs> All right. So if you start her up, you should get fuel pressure there. Yeah, if I just, yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's working. It looks like I hooked it up correctly too, because nice I get work. insane values. Okay, I think we're ready to start this thing up. Uh, I want to put it up on the lift again, real quick. That way, it'll be easier to see if anything's leaking underneath it. I have to do something similar to what Tony did, since I moved that connector, which is an input on the ECU, an analog input. I moved it from brake pressure over to trans pressure. So if you look at my list here. Right here, we have brake pressure. Uh, that's AN5, so analog input number five. So let's see. Over here, I'm on analog inputs. You can see number five is brake pressure. And if we take a look at that, we have our settings for brake pressure. It is a general purpose pressure sensor, you can see. I'm gonna change it from brake pressure. I'm just gonna rename it. Uh, it's the RD port pressure, but I'm just gonna call it trans pressure because I may move that sensor around or add sensors and move the connector around to get different transmission readings. So now that says trans pressure there. So trans pressure is using calibration number five, which is an auto meter, uh, 2240 sensor I've built it as. Uh, I have a bunch of sensors. Whatever sensors I'm using are built in these calibration tables. I'm going to have to use calibration table number seven uh, and configure it because this is a 300 PSI sensor. So let me go over to here. We're going to change this and use cal table seven. Here it is, cal table seven. Uh, error low. Since it's a 0.5 to 4.5 volt sensor, I'll have it throw me an error code if it gets down below 0.05, which is how it was set before, and 4.95 on the high end, and it'll show me zero if uh, it gets there. So, cal table number seven needs to be set up. So over here on ECU settings, we'll go down to cal table seven. Uh, there's the settings for that table and the table itself. So let's go to the settings. The uh, input units, it's volts. Output units is going to be PSI. And then the table is going to look something like this. Input voltage. We'll have to change those axes. Axes, axis. Axis setup. Input voltage is going to be, if it's 0.5, that's uh, one of the inputs, that's the low, and 4.5 is the high. So at 0 psi, it's 0.5 volts. At 300, it's 4.5. So at Right there, 0 0.5 at zero. And at 4.5, it's 300. And so if it's anywhere in between, it's, it's linear between 0.5 and 4.5 volts. It's a linear scale from zero to 300 PSI. So that should work. Cal table seven, good. And uh, just to double check, our trans pressure is using Cal Table 7. So I'm going to add that to a screen so I can see it. 
Let's see, maybe right over here. All right, let's save this, first of all. Store it to the ECU, the changes I made. I'm gonna have to remove something here to uh, add trans pressure. We'll get rid of warm up enrichment for now and add trans pressure. So now trans pressure exists right down there. So when I start it, I can monitor that. Starting this thing up is next. Tony, do you want to start it up? Yeah. All yes, right. let me. All right, you be the wheel man. Yeah. Getaway driver. <laughs> All right, I'll keep an eye on the laptop, make sure we got the right numbers, and I'll look underneath the leaks. All right, let's see. Put cheese on it.